as a lot of you know, I really like NixOS. I think NixOS is powerful, it's fantastic, it's portable, you can move the configuration to different machines, you can customize your dot files, you can copy the script, move it around, I've made uh, videos for it, CLI installers, everything. You name it, I enjoy it and still have more Nix OS content to make. But there are at times when you shouldn't be using Nix OS, and I'm going to list five reasons, and this is just my personal opinion. It doesn't take away anything from the project or from the technology, but there are a couple of I'd say areas of improvement. Number five, the documentation sucks. Now, honestly, folks, that is true. Have you ever tried to look for solid documentation around NixOS? Good luck. You know, uh, even on their own forums, their own blogs, wikis, there's information that contradicts each other. Uh, there's because of how they've in recent times introduced other different types of technology and might not be properly, uh, you know, supported or spoken about and different forums, different places are going to tell you many ways to do the exact same thing. And unfortunately, that can be a stumbling block uh, to a new user because what on earth are you supposed to do? Now, there is a lot of good work going on that the team is doing to fix this. So in future, it's going to be a lot better and it's already started to improve. But unfortunately, it is a reality out there compared to a lot of other uh, operating systems. Uh, number four, I've said to flake or not to flake. So it's it's all the rage. Home Manager, flakes and all the stuff is all the rage with NixOS. But the problem is not everyone uses it. And what I mean by that is it's been estimated that half of the NixOS user base uses flakes. And basically the team has turned around and said that they're going to continue using flakes and it's more official but there's no guarantee that the way that we learn it now that they're not going to change how the technology works completely in a year or two so you might end up setting everything and configuring it and it might eventually stop working around flakes and it is even though you know it's still even to activate it you do have to put in some overrides in the system as well and if you want to learn how to use flakes from scratch, good luck. Uh, the documentation is varied on which version of flakes, how it's evolved over time. And uh, a lot of uh, using flakes at times contradicts how to use NixOS, especially if you're a staunch configuration.nix uh, user like I am. And number three, uh, NixOS teaches you how to use NixOS. Now that might sound like a stupid statement, but a lot of the additional skills that you learn on NixOS, Flakes, Home Manager, uh, Configuration.nix, and all these type of things, it is skills that are going to really only help you in the Nix Package Manager environment and the Nix OS environment. A lot of those additional skills you might learn but you can't really go and use them on other OSs. And I'm not talking about installing the Nix package manager in a different OS. Obviously, that's a different thing. But you're not learning necessarily a lot of Linux in general. You're learning the skills to manage Nix OS. So it's not the same as if you go at home, set up Nix OS, and then expect that you can suddenly use what you've learned to operate a, a Gentoo system or Arch system or a Red Hat system or whatever it is. So it's something to bear in mind. NixOS teaches you NixOS. Uh, software support is limited, folks. Now, what do I mean by that? Try to go and do normal compiling of software or run a normal binary on this OS and tell me how far you're going to get. And you'll often see software, stuff like crossover, and uh, expand drive and a couple of other other different random software packages that exist don't necessarily work and that's of course the way that the OS is structured now yes uh, there is over 80,000 types of software in the repos yes you can use something like distrobox doesn't always work for every piece of software that mind you yes some of them you really can recompile from scratch yes you can do workarounds to get app images working but the truth of the matter is, 
not every bit of software is going to work and not every bit of software is available as a flat pack either. So that doesn't help. So bear in mind, there might be some software packages that you're never going to get working in NixOS that do work in other Linux OSs. So, and number one, I've said mainstream is not supported. Just kind of similar with uh, the documentation point, but what I mean, mean about that? Well, you're a new user, you need help. If you're using Debian or you're using Arch or Gentoo or Ubuntu or heck, even CentOS, there's a ton of information available out there. And a lot of it is very similar. A lot of it is congealed together. A lot of it doesn't really contradict each other. NixOS, that you're going to have to dig in. You're going to have to understand how NixOS functions. You're going to have to understand uh, the Nix language as well, you know, scripting. You, you're going to have to expand your skills because because quite often to fix the issues on NixOS, you're going to have to fix it yourself and you're not going to necessarily find a resource that's going to be able to help you because it might just not be there. So folks, these are my top five reasons not to use NixOS. Uh, be interested to hear your comments below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, uh, remember, I'm, I am still a hardcore NixOS user, but um, I do acknowledge it's a uh, uh, stellar areas for growth. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now. Mm -hmm.